I'm the man when you get into trouble. <laughs> this is what you been doing. You cutting up in school. <laughs> but uh, it was always there. I always felt like there, there was always cameras around me, and I just do things out of the random, out of the ordinary, mm-hmm. just because I always felt like I had a viewing audience. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. So then, what? What brought you to the season in your life where you knew you wanted to do that seriously? Um, back in 2008, mm-hmm. I was in um, going to community college, mm-hmm. get my associates in business management, and I was looking for a real career opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like I had just got finished with the Navy, and I was cutting hair. I didn't want to barber anymore, so I was really trying to find out what it is that I wanted to do in life. And I came across this audition online for a, a comedy show. And I was like, I'd drive up to Atlanta and try, uh-huh. you know, I ain't got nothing to lose. And I came up, did the comedy show, did really good. But when I was up there on stage, I got this feeling that I never had before in my life. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, my God, I can do this for the rest of my life. It gave me the chills. It gave me a natural high. And I just knew that I wanted to do stand-up. So I packed up, moved to Atlanta, wow. started p- pursuing stand-up comedy. But once I got here, I found out that there were so many funny underground comedians. Like, what am I going to be able to do to diversify myself so that I won't be just like these other funny underground comedians that's going from club to club, you know, night after night, not getting any notoriety, any recognition, or not moving up. So when I got finished uh, with community college, I went down to Alabama State, ASU, Hornet Nation back here. That's right. We are excited about Alabama State University. That's right. The SWAT. We was the leaders of the SWAT. Let me tell you. Stay up. Stay up. Got it. Got it. When I went down to ASU, Mm -hmm. um, it changed my whole life. Being in the theater department with Dr. Thomas Stewart, Thomas Stewart. Uh, Mr. Brian Martin, Dr. Wendy Coleman, Mr. Anthony Stocker, Ms. Ramona Ward, Mr. Uh, Brian Cashew, just all the instructors down there, like they, they shoot for greatness and they're going to bring greatness out of you too yes. as well. And when I found out about the theater, there was so many career opportunities in the production world. Not just acting itself, but they expose you to the whole world of production, the stage management, wow. directing, theater management, uh, costume and construction, makeup, construction itself, you know, wow. just everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a whole big old world out there, it's isn't it? It's a whole it? big old world out there. That is awesome. Which brings us to where you're at today. So you have had some projects that have been going on. Um I watched Poor Choices. Um, was it, it's funny because it's so relatable, but it's so real. The message is just so. I mean, it's just right there in your face. Boom! This is what it could be. So why don't you tell our audience a little bit about that short? Is that considered a short film? Is yeah. it cons- okay? Short, short film. film. Poor Choices is a short film that was done by. Uh, a group of kids that participated in the Acting Out program. Now, with Acting Out, we teach the kids about short film production, you know, about all the uh, production components that it takes to produce a short film, and then we also teach them about the acting process, too, as well. That's understanding uh, script analysis, breaking it down, character development process, and also the acting process itself. So the the shorts are done primarily all by the kids themselves. The kids, uh, they have an opportunity to interview for production um, crew mm-hmm. jobs, and they also have an audition to, um, to uh, I guess, brain freeze here. That's audition, a big actual audition for the audition for the role okay. to act in the short film, you know, and then at the end of the program, uh, we come together on a shoot day and, and we hash it all out. We have a uh, oh, professional awesome. screenwriters mm-hmm. that write all our screenplays and all our screenplays, they target a theme that's mm-hmm. really hindering kids in the community, whether it's substance abuse, um, abstinence, gang violence, bullying, obesity, um, high school awareness, whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. So with the program itself, it always have an outcome to help continue to educate and inspire and motivate other kids. Wow, and it really does. So why don't you tell us about the theme for Poor Choices? Poor Choices uh, themes were uh, substance abuse and abstinence because the uh, the nonprofit tiers, uh, we did this one down in Alabama, mm-hmm. they were having their summer program and the, um, 
the the uh, CEO of the nonprofit mm -hmm. said that she wanted uh, that that things for substance abuse and abstinence for this uh, summer camp program. Mm -hmm. So uh, once we got our things, uh, we used our tagline, our log line, you know, uh, to be safe, better than sorry, yes. and we stuck with it, and uh, we basically um, just wrote a screenplay dealing with kids in a uh, inner city community that shows them making the wrong choices and when you make poor choices you have poor outcomes right. but the thing that we want them to understand is that the healthier choices and the good choices that you make in life help you have a healthier and a better life it does and let me tell you what i love most about it well i don't know how old the kids were but they looked relatively young we're talking maybe 12 13 so it's that 14 yeah. yeah and so um and that to me was what really resonated because I don't think people understand just how young these kids are being exposed because one of the things, you know, when the when the boy had the pill, mm -hmm. you know, and they getting ready to, you know, the, the girls was ready to get down. See, I'm looking at it like, you know, those little kids, that, that kind of awareness, I think, is such an eye-opener for so many parents around here not realizing that, our youth are being targeted at a very young age to yes. do all kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Nothing like we were exposed to. And, you know, I know we talked to our parents, nothing like they were exposed to then. So, you know, it, it, it was awesome not to, you know, even see 18 or 19 year olds. You really brought it, you know, the reality of it starts this young. Because yeah. we're talking about kids who were, you know, excited just about, playing basketball 11 years old on the you know basketball court and then they are faced with these kind of decisions so being in this service industry and social you know uh social working the the social working field do you see that a lot you know that the 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 more you get into the things that are causing the issues the younger the children may be yes uh i mean i've dealt with kids where Ten-year-old boy, uh, I think the oldest girl was twelve. They seen uh, a parent kill a sibling. You know, yeah. um, they expressed it after whew, probably a year after even knowing them. Uh, wow. They probably didn't, they didn't want to see them again. Uh, matter of fact, they was afraid of them. Wow. Um, I've seen kids. been around a lot of families yes. um, kids not want to express themselves to their parents because they feel like they may not be able to go to their parents mm -hmm. because those are the people that discipline them those are the people that they look up to those are the people that they want to be proud of <laughs> so having community groups give them a place where they can kind of express their stuff yes. you know what I you got a clean slate with me I'm not gonna judge you either right. way you know what, I'm not going to spank you, I can't do that, I'm, I'm not your parent, the right. state can come and get me, but if it's something that is bothering you in your mind, you know, it's just having a person to voice that to. Yeah. Um, one thing I did notice when you were saying about the Oscars and opportunities, mm -hmm. other than that, it's an uh, opportunity for kids to develop uh, problem solving and decision making skills. Yes. We did have one young man who was uh, involved in a situation in school and he didn't know quite how to handle it but we had already went over uh, in some scenarios throughout the group how would you handle a bullying situation right. how would you handle a right. situation where you could avoid being into an altercation with another student so he was able to utilize some of those uh, things that we talked about in the group and that they actually improved on and he I mean came out in a good light like yes. nobody got hurt Yes. Uh, the beef and squash, <laughs> you know, and I guess a peace treaty was signed. Right? So, you know, it's just uh, you know providing skills. Also, it's not just yes. you know acting or production. It's also skill building. I think that is, and that's amazing. And for them to be able to experience that at such a young age, again, if we get our youth while they're youth. Mm -hmm. They definitely have opportunities for a better future, you know. So, listen, we have so much more uh, to get into. We're going to take a quick break, though. You know, I have to remind everybody, sometimes we are a radio show. So, we're going to listen to the sounds of 108 Praise Radio. And when we get back, we're going to continue with our topic today, which 
to be honest, I just call it all about the fellas tonight. Yeah, There's not even really this. yes. Oh, just to, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So um, I've been here, Tony Williams, and also here with Lionel. We will be right back. This is Angela Foxworth of the Angela Foxworth Show right here on 108 Praise Radio, and we will be right back in just a few. And I love doing this, Chuck Rillery, two and two. <laughs> but it is going to be longer than two. <laughs> 108 Praise? <laughs> 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 you know it's you they really don't mean nothing